Okay, and uh, last team, we're going to hear from uh, Touch Young Arrows. Hi everyone, how's everyone feeling? Good. Lukewarm? It's okay, we're warming up with our fiery passion. <laughs> this is Team TYA. TYA stands for Touch Young Arrows, which is the NGO we're working for. I'm Clara. This is Sally. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is Chelsea, and that's Sally. So, um, while uh, during this process, we were coached by the men with the iron fist. <laughs> His name is Zegorz, but it's too hard to pronounce, so most people just call him Greg. <laughs> so um, for, um, I'll just give a quick introduction to Touch Young Arrows. Um, these are some of their lovely faces. I mean, you can't really see their faces, but they're quite lovely. Anyway, so um, they're a service of Touch Community Services. They are a not-for-profit charity organization, obviously. Uh, they mainly, mainly serve children from 6 to 12 years old from two groups, low-income and single-parent families. And they will provide educational, social and emotional support for them. Uh, and they do this through activities planned for them. Uh, firstly, through weekly programs. They give them 1.5 uh, free academic coaching, sorry, 1.5 hours of free academic coaching and one hour of creati uh, creative learning and character development activities. On top of that, they have year-round family bonding events uh, and character development camps. Um, so when TYA came to Tech Ladies, they were facing quite a bit of admin struggles, mainly due to tedious data management using multiple Excel sheets. Um, they were unable to find and extract data easily. Uh, and this is important because when donors come to them, they will ask for, like, say, give me the percentage of, like, say, your Chinese um, students who come. And they would have to manually sort through all the Excel sheets to get the info required. Um, updating client info on a weekly basis was very difficult and time consuming. Um, they had to put in regular behavioral uh, progress, academic progress, and the notes on the family situation. And all these were done in like Excel sheets. Um, Excel is also not very friendly, which is a problem because a lot of the volunteers at the events, uh, they would use their mobile phones. And they will end up with multiple copies and versions of files um, at all of their events which left them feeling a little bit like this. So um, to help you guys understand our app later on a little bit better, let's just uh, go through the structure. Um, they have 24 club locations uh, and three types of users. The staff are full-time people on board and they will have access to all areas of the app. The supervisor and club leaders are actually volunteers. They only have restricted access to certain portions of the app. The weekly events are held at their respective clubs and clients, which are the students that attend the events. Um, when they are at the club gatherings, um, they would have their attendance and behavioral notes recorded. So let's show you what we've built. Okay. Can we go to the... <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, this one. Mm, it's over here. Yeah, this one. No, 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 this one. Sorry for the slight technical difficulties. Anyway, okay, so this is an actual sample of what uh, Touch Young Arrows um, use. Uh, for recording data. As you can see, it's quite inefficient because like, they will have to manually enter um, data like this, like this, and like this. And um, let's say if they want to find out, say, how many uh, primary one kids um, they have, they will have to do like a manual tally, like OP1, then they have to do like sum equals bracket, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you guys all know how Excel works. Yeah, and uh, let's say um, the volunteers wanted to key in some information about um, the clients, they would have to do it over here, like, oh, uh, this children was hard, uh, this child was hard to handle. Um, yeah, so you can see it's quite difficult for them to read and retrieve information. So um, we solved that for them. So let's go and take a look at our app now. Okay, 
So this is the app we built for them. Um, this is actually live on Heroku. And um, once you go to the URL, you would be forced to log in using a staff email address. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Heroku takes a bit, a while to load. Okay, so once we have entered the app, you can see that uh, this is a page that shows you all of the clients. And if let's say I wanted to find out like, oh, who are the clients that are in Boon King Club, I can do it through the filter here. And it would only show me the clients that are in Boon King Club. Um, if let's say I needed to export this data to give it to a donor, I could just click. Ta-da! You hit um, export it to a CSV, which I can manipulate and send to whoever was asking for it. Um, also, if let's say I wanted to sort um, their date of birth or their level, I could do so like that. Yeah. Um, I can also add a new client from this page. You can see uh, this is quite self-explanatory. I can key in their details, click create client, and they would be entered into the system uh, in a friendly manner. Um, uh, if I wanted to find out more information, if let's say of one of the particular clients, let's say Amelia Tan. Okay, so we can see her lovely face here. She doesn't really like taking photographs. Um, yeah, so we can see her profile, her first name, the club she belongs to, her status in the club, um, some other details. If let's say during the event, I found out, oh, she has a medical condition, so I can just key in here. And if we found out that she had a certain hobby, for example. <laughs> and we can just click update. And the information will be populated here, available to anyone that um, is interested in finding out about Amelia Tan for all the other volunteers and staff to see. And um, the next section in the client's profile, it's the family um, household section where we can give, can enter info about their parents or siblings or guardians. Um, so the important part here is um, possibly the monthly income. Um, we can key in the monthly income of all the household members. And at the bottom here, under fi family finances, this will be totaled up um, automatically. And also the income per capita will be calculated automatically for them. Uh, previously, they had to do this manually using formulas in Excel sheet, which is um, difficult because it always breaks. Yeah. OK, for the next section, I'll pass it to Chelsea. OK, hi, guys. So um, each client will also have a series of school grades because TYA wants to track the client's academic progress throughout the few years that they're with them. So as you can see here, it's very easy to add a grade. It, it comes out in a modal, and you, it's fairly self-explanatory too. So you can just add a grade here, and it will be displayed here, and it can be edited, edited and deleted in the same place. So you can also view less and view more. View more would toggle the next five grades, and view less will shorten everything to five grades. And this makes it also easier for TYA volunteers to take a look at their progress over the years. For example, you can see that Amelia's math has improved over um, from P5 to P6. So aside from that, each client also has their own notes. There are two types of notes, general notes and notes tagged to an event. I'll talk about events later, but for general notes, it could be from uh, home visits that the staff conducts for the clients, aside from the usual club actions. So I can just add a note. It's a very simple modal here. So I can, I'm just going to do a short one. OK, so there's metadata at that here. So there's a date that's we added it 17 Jan and the user that I'm in right now. So there's also attendances. So each client will have a series of attendances. Here we have displayed um, a list of the events in her club. So she's in Boon King Club. So these are all the events in Boon King Club and the ones that she has attended for. The rationale of this is so that the volunteers can see very easily her attendance rate over the past few sessions because it's sorted by date. So we can flag up a possible issue if she hasn't been coming for her sessions, etc. So the events, the attendances and the notes tie very closely to the events. And you can access them individually here or from the navigation bar. So 
the navigation, it works similar to clients. You can filter it by club. So let's just go to Booking Club. And yeah, so these, this is an example of the event page and what it looks like. So the main use case for this is actually on mobile. The idea is that each club leader on the event day itself will create an event and be able to mark attendances for each child. So here we have a table rendered for all the clients with all the clients within that club. So for example, here's the list and the attendances as well as their level and gender. So this is actually optimized for mobile. So it's easier for them to mark their attendances. And at the end of every event, uh, during the debrief and review session, the club leaders can add their own notes about uh, you know, the different clients' behavior. And the fields here are going to be populated in the client profile page that we saw earlier on. So yeah. And if we go back to the client's main page, the attendances that I mentioned earlier, you can actually export them by club. So for example, I can go to Boonkin Club and I click Export Attendances. And this will export a list of all the attendances for the clients in Boonkin Club throughout all the events that they have attended. Now I'll pass the mic to Sally to talk about our user permissions. Okay. All right, so I'm Sally, and I'll take you through the club and user sections of the app. Uh, I'll first talk about the club section. So as Clara mentioned, touch young arrows have 24 clubs located all over Singapore. So in our app, we have a clubs drop down menu. And uh, it lets you pick a club and it filters by uh, clients and events. So each user, client, or event is assigned to a club. So let's go to the clubs page. Each club belongs to a zone, Central, East, West, and so on. You can add a club, edit a club, or delete a club. So uh, that's all for clubs. It's relatively straightforward. Now let's move on to the users part of the app, which is a bit more complex. So touch young arrows have three different types of users uh, who are contributing or working in the organization. Uh, namely, it's a club leader, staff, and supervisor. Uh, one of the problems that touch young arrows face with spreadsheets is that they can't actually restrict permissions uh, of the spreadsheet to certain people. So uh, the organization did not want certain people to have uh, information to restricted data, uh, like someone's financial or family situation. So uh, in this application we created, there are three different account types with different levels of access. So right now, I am at the staff account. And here at the users page, I can view and manage all the users. Also, the staff user type is able to access all the clubs, as you can see here. And when we go to a client's profile, so Amelia's profile, the staff will be able to view, edit, and input all the client details. So in this account, uh, the user is able to add a family member, and they're also able to have a look at the family finances. OK, so for the second user type, which is that of a club leader. Uh, so Sally is logging into a club leader account now instead of a staff account, where permissions are different, and certain info will be hidden for them. Uh, so we are right now at the second user type, the club leader. Uh, so at this uh, account type, you can't actually add users. You can only manage your own account. So here you can edit your own account. And they are only able to access the one club that they belong to. So in this case, uh, this user belongs to the Boon King Club, and he or she can only view this club. And on the client's profile, let's go to Amelia again. As you can see, it's quite different from uh, what you can see in the other accounts. So for example, you can change the hobbies and medical condition. But when you click on family background, you can't 
edit this. And also, there's no button for you to add the family uh, details here. And you also can't see the family finances at all on the profile. As you can see, there's differences between the two different account types. And um, there's a, the third account type, which is the supervisor account. It's similar to that of the club leader, so I won't show you this. So that is all for the demo of the app. Uh, with these features, touch young arrows can input the information that they need, and uh, they can also determine what information is seen by who. Uh, so next, we will uh, share the lessons that we have learned from building this app. So we'll move on to the PowerPoint slides. Okay. Uh, so these are my reflections. OK, so first of all, you don't have to be great at maths or science to be good at coding. Uh, I graduated with a Bachelor of Arts, and I'm not a maths person, but I really enjoy coding. And also, coding is not as rigid as I thought. It has a creative side, and this is how I feel when I code. I feel colorful, <laughs> and I can create magic with code. Yeah, uh, and also, uh, Modern uh, programming languages like Ruby and Python can be easy to pick up. All you need is a tiny bit of maths basic algebra, and uh, you need a lot of patience and persistence. And you have to be, uh, you have to persist stubbornly because you're gonna, I mean, the break, uh, the app is gonna break a lot, and you need to try and try again until you actually uh, manage to fix the app. And now I'll pass it on to Chelsea, who will tell you more about what she has learned. Thank you, Sally. OK. Um, yeah. So the main thing I picked up from Tech Ladies Bootcamp is that programming is a lot about iteration and experimentation. So it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or professional. The feedback loop you go through is more or less the same. So mine looks a little bit like this. I write some code, I test it, I wait for a response, and I fix it. And after a lot of tries, I get to celebrate. So that's the pro process of me writing my own program at, or the TYA app. But the thing is, to improve as a programmer, we have to improve on the speed and the accuracy. We make these kind of loops, right? And the way that we can do that is through making more iterations and making, putting in more practices and making more rounds. And I think the way to do that is to learn, which is to fail and learn and not be afraid to take what you've learned and write your own code and write your own wrong code and let it fail. And fail fast so that we can learn to fix even faster and make these kind of repetitions with increased accuracy. And so don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to, to fail and just make sure you learn from them. And now I'll be passing it on to, Sally, uh, to Clara. We keep getting our names wrong. <laughs> anyway, by the way, she's only 17 years old this year. So I think it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Okay, on to my reflections. Okay, I have three programming Ps that I've um, sort of gathered throughout this process. The first one is patience. Um, it was important for me to remember that I was learning something new after all and not to be um, too hard for myself on myself when I was failing because it just added a lot of unnecessary stress when I pressured myself like this. Um, next, persistence. I think it's like a common thread in everybody's learning lessons. Um, you will run into errands, uh, uh, errors and hard to solve problems. Sometimes you just need to keep trying and just know what to put into Google and eventually end up at Stack Overflow and you will solve your problems. Uh, thirdly, um, practice, practice and practice. There's just no other way to get good at programming. The more you code, the more you screw up, the more you fix them, the more you learn. Last one. Focus, no, not really. Focus, okay, so set aside chunks of time to code at a goal without distractions. Um, I found it more effective for myself when I had like maybe two to three hours chunks where I would just sit there and code nonstop rather than do it in bits and pieces. So I found that that was what works best for me because you just need a lot of RAM and I don't have a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> so to sum it up, those were my three Ps and one F. So um, the three of us are actually actively looking to enter the industry. So 
please adopt us. <laughs> Put us on your hiring radar. <laughs> yeah. So the three of us are really seriously wanting to enter this industry, and we are very open to opportunities. Uh, we are looking for internships, whatever you can throw at us, really. We just want to code more and learn more. Um, this is our contact information. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can, thank you, thank you. You can snap a picture of it, or just come to us. We'll be very happy to put our numbers into your phones. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, so thank you to our mentor, Elisha, and everyone who was part of this amazing journey, and all the other girls as well. I'm glad we went through this together. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Hang on. Okay, so any, any questions? But Clara, I thought you started an internship already. I did. <laughs> um, I'm actually, I actually have an internship right now, but yeah, I'm, it's for the next three months. So I'm open to other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so does anyone still want to take their photo? Should I go back the slide? Oh, yeah, please. OK. Oh, oh. oh sorry. <laughs> yeah, put us on your hiring radar. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's our contact information. So right now you want to track those people who are taking photos? Because those are the people. <laughs> no, you want to talk to them later. OK. Yeah. That's quite a lot. OK, thank you so much. Thank you. Touch Young Arrows. Yeah.